guys, it's Mrs. Millison. Let's do the check you understand on page 228. Okay. One sad fact about life is that we're all, we'll all die someday. So many adults plan ahead for their eventual passing by purchasing life insurance. Many different types of life insurance policies are available. Some provide coverage throughout an individual's life, which is called whole life, while others only last for a specified number of years, which is called term insurance. The policyholder makes regular payments called premiums to the insurance company in return for the coverage. When the insured person dies, a payment is made to designated family members or other beneficiaries. How do insurance companies decide how much to charge for life insurance? They rely on a staff of highly trained actuaries, which is a lot of math, people with expertise in probability statistics and advanced mathematics to establish premiums. For an individual who wants to buy life insurance, the premiums will depend on the type and amount of the policy, as well as personal characteristics like age, sex, and health status. The table below shows monthly premiums for a 10-year term life insurance policy worth a million dollars, okay? So of course, if you're 40 years old, the likelihood that you're gonna die is a lot less, so it's cheaper. The older you get, the more expensive it is, okay? The output shows three possible models for predicting monthly premium from age, okay? Option one is based on the original data, okay? So let's look at option one. So when we did a scatter plot of age against premium, we saw that it was a bit of a curve, okay? So our least, we can always do a least squared regression line. The residuals look, to look very curved. So since the residuals look curved, this might not be the best model, okay? A linear model might not be the best way to predict, okay? And here's our least squared regression line. Predicted premium um, is based on age, okay? Option two and three involve transformations of the original data. Okay, so we transform the data the original data in these two scenarios. So for this one, we took the natural log of the age versus the natural log of the premium, okay? So we natural log both of them. So every time we see predicted premium and age in the equation, we have to take the natural log. You can see the observations got much straighter. I still see a little curve, but they're definitely much straighter. Residual still looks a little curved, eh, okay? The third option, let's see, we took age against the natural log of the premium. So in our least squared regression line, we only have to natural log premium. Now this data is much straighter, okay? My gosh, it's very straight. And the residual, I don't see a curve, okay? It's kind of up and down, up and down, up and down. So this is looking pretty good, okay? So let's see what we're supposed to do here. Each set of output includes a scatter plot, least squared regression line, and a residual. All right, we've already talked about those. Let's use each model to predict how much a 58-year-old would pay for such a policy. So I know I have to take 58 and plug it in for the age in all of these equations. Okay, so let's do that first. Can you guys see that? I know that book kind of causes a glare, or shadow, rather. All right, option one. Oops. Option one, there's my least squared regression line for option one. So I'm gonna do premium, predicted premium is negative 343 plus 8.63 times the age, okay? So there's my X and there's my predicted Y. So to get my predicted premium, I'm just going to Plug in, what was it, 58 for a 58 year old person, okay? Stick that in the calculator, I've already done this. So my predicted premium is gonna be $157.54, okay? And you're like, yeah, that, that prediction seems pretty good. Who knows, whatever. <laughs> okay, option two, Option two, my equation involves the natural log of the premium and the natural log of the age. So now I have to do natural log of premium equals, what's that, negative 12.98 plus 4.416 times the natural log of the age, okay? So now I need to plug in the natural log of 58, okay? So natural log of premium, 
put that in the calculator and you have a natural log button right here. Okay, natural log button is right here. So I'll pull this, throw this one in. Oh, I get 12 point, what is it? 9.8 plus 4.416 times the natural log of 58. And I get this, 4.9509. We'll just do a couple decimals. Now, um, hopefully you remember in logs that natural log is a base E. So I can rewrite this, this as an exponential. E to the power of 4.9509 equals the predicted premium. Throw that in the calculator. We've got a little E button. Where's our E? There it is. We have to do second E or second natural log. So it brings E to the power. I'm just gonna go up and grab that, okay? So I won't even have any rounding. And that is 141. So my predicted premium for option two is 141 dollars and 30 cents okay and again seems reasonable pretty close to 157 a little cheaper okay third option back up to the book. third option I kept the age but I natural log the premium so there is my equation so natural log of the predicted premium equals, what is that? Negative 0 0.063 plus 0 0.0859 times the age. Okay, let me come down here and plug that in. So again, I just have to plug in the age, which was 58. And let me write all this down. Plug that in the calculator and we get 4.0. 9192. And again, I got to rewrite this as an exponential to solve for the premium. So uh, base of a natural log is E. So E to the 4.9192 equals the predicted premium. Okay. I'm going to throw this in the calculator so I get it exact. And I get 0 0.063 plus 59 times 58, okay. Oh, it was exact, I didn't think it was terminal, decimal. Okay, so E, we'll grab that. And now that premium is $136.89, uh, right? So that is my predicted premium. Again, they all seem relatively reasonable, okay. Uh, this last one is the cheapest, don't know if that's the best, okay. Um, so which model does the best job summarizing the relationship between age and monthly premium? Okay, well, we kind of alluded to that when we were looking at the three models. Too much of a pattern in the residuals here, this is a nice residual, okay? Plus, if you look at your scatter plot, this looks the most, has the strongest uh, linear relationship or correlation. Well, if you look at it, it's got a correlation of 1.00. This correlation of 0.99 and 0.90, they're not bad, but boy, that is a whole lot better. That's perfect, right? So I'm gonna go with option three because the residual is the most scattered. These have a clear curve pattern. And my correlation, excuse me, um, my R squared, well, if I found correlation, I would square root it. Well, the square root of one is one, okay? And the square root of these two would be um, eight something, okay? So this has the strongest correlation and the strongest coefficient of determination, okay? Because my, my R squared is closest, closest to one or 100%, which means my correlation would be closer to one, okay? So I'm gonna go with option three as my best prediction. So I should natural log the premium and keep the age as is, okay? I hope this was helpful and I shall see you next time.